Hello, welcome to our broadcast. Uh, today, I'm going to be uh, teaching from Matthew chapter 11, where Jesus says, Come to me and I will give you rest. And I want to uh, really expound on this a little bit because man makes religion or the gospel complicated. But Jesus made it so simple. And men, when men get involved and we get our theology involved, we get our thinking involved and, and trying to do it our way without God, we complicate the message. We complicate the message of the gospel. We complicate what Jesus did for us and how powerful it is, but yet how simple. Jesus at one point said that don't make the children go away. That In the King James, it says, don't suffer the children to, uh, unto me or not. Don't keep them from me. But let the children, because of such is the kingdom of God. Because as a, as a child or as, as a child thinks, a child just simply believes what you tell them. They don't ask you, well, are you sure? Or why is it this way? Or how, is it, how does this work? Or, or can you tell me a little bit more about it so I'll believe? No, you say something to a child and they simply just say, yes, I believe. So in Matthew chapter 11, I'm going to be talking about that uh, how, how Jesus really just makes the gospel so easy. And we're the ones that complicate it. Uh, before we do that, let, let me go ahead and open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for revealing from your word, revealing, Lord God, who we are in you and revealing who you are in us and the power of your word. Revealing, Lord God, the power of the simpleness of the gospel, of how powerful it is. And it, it's not so complicated, Lord. And Father, we just thank you. We thank you for opening up our spiritual eyes, opening up our understanding. Give us the wisdom to see and spiritually discern, Lord God, the truth of your word so that we can be the women and men of God in this earth, that we can be, Lord God. We can be your people and we can be the ones that make a difference in this earth. And Father, we give you thanks today in the name of Jesus. And everybody in agreement said, Amen. In Matthew 11, chapter 25, uh, in the King James Version, it says, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the New Living Translation. At the, at the time Jesus prayed this prayer, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves to be wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Now, who does Jesus choose to reveal the power and the message of the gospel to? He goes on to say in verse 28, Then Jesus said, Come to me. Who? Only a, a select few, only the ones that are uh, of religious uh, piety, only those that are that are theologians. No, he says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Then verse 29, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Do you feel like that following after God or being a Christian is so burdensome or so, uh, so, so much that I can't live this life. If you're feeling that way, you're, you're feeling the weight of religion. You're feeling the weight of rules and regulations and, and things that and the old law, how it was designed to show you how bad you were so that you would look to the Savior, so that you would look to God and say, God, we can't do this without you. The law was never given to turn you away from God, but to cause you to have to run to Him because without God, there's no way you were going to be able to do it. So Jesus is explaining to them, and this is just after uh, John the Baptist has sent his disciples out to find out, is this, is this Jesus who's out there teaching? Is this really Him? Because at this time, John the Baptist was in prison. And Jesus is explaining to the people how simple, and again, he says, to revealing to them, them to the childlike. Now, what is that? Childlike is not immature. It's not just goofy or, or people that are irresponsible. Or He's not saying that type of childlike. He's saying a childlike 
faith. Those who believe like a child, simple faith and trust. Have you ever, have you ever taken your, your child or a grandchild and, and stood them up on something and said, Hey, jump to me. And they just leap right into your arms. No hesitation. Why? Because they know they just simply believe that you are going to catch them unless you drop them one time. <laughs> you drop them one time and then the next time they're going to be like, uh, uh, I'm not jumping. No way. But see, God has never given us a reason to distrust him. Religion or uh, regulations and all these things that, that has been taught of who God is and how you have to get to God and, and what you have to do to be saved. All of these things cause us to distrust because we are looking at our own failures. We're not God's failures. We are looking at our failures. We're looking at where we've blown it, where we've messed up. So we don't trust because we know that God is pure and God is holy. We don't trust that when we leap or when we get near him, is he going to open his arms or is he going to close them and reject us? See, we... We look at our own mistakes, our own failures, and our own uh, deceits, our own uh, er every mistake that we've ever made or every act that we knew was wrong, but yet we did it anyway. All of those things we compile upon ourselves to say, I don't have a right to go to the Father. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. Let me read this to you in the uh, Passion Translation. In the Passion Translation, it says, uh, Then Jesus excl exclaimed, Father, thank you, for you are Lord, the supreme ruler over heaven and earth. You've hidden the great revelation of your authority from those who are proud and wise in their own eyes. Instead, you've shared it with these who humble themselves. Yes, Father, your plan delights your heart as you've chosen this way to extend your kingdom by giving it to those who have become like trusting children. You have entrusted, verse 27, you have entrusted me with all that you are and all that you have. No one fully and intimately knows the Son except the Father. And no one fully and intimately knows the Father except the Son. But the Son is able to unveil the Father to anyone He chooses. Now, who does he choose to reveal to? Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine, learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. That is so simple, and we make it so complicated because we add to and we put our own uh, theology onto what Jesus said. Simply, all Jesus was saying to you, if you come to me, you come to me, keep following after God. Search after him, read your Bible, pray, even when you don't feel like it. Make a conscious decision to, that you're going to have a relationship with Him, that you're going you're gonna to look for God on a daily basis. You're going to talk to God on a daily basis. You're going to read the Bible. You're going you're gonna to learn everything you can. And if you don't understand it, then keep reading. Because I'm telling you, if you keep on, you keep on, something's going to click. It's going to open up and you're going to go, wow, I've never seen that before. You, might not, you don't have to understand the whole entire Bible. You don't have to understand all of it. Listen, a child doesn't understand uh, wh what it means to be a, a child and, and a parent, the difference and all that. They just, they're in it. They're in the relationship. They don't have to know how it works. They don't have to know how they got here or how, how, they, how they're in this family or in this household. They just simply are and they trust and they believe. So coming to God simple, with a simple heart, with a simple mind to say, Lord, Here's If you said the criteria is, are you weary and a burden and heavy laden, come to me. Okay, I need help. So I'm coming to you, God. He didn't, he didn't turn anyone away that needed help or that, that needed something from him or needed, needed a, their life to be changed. He never turns anyone away. The simple power, the simple message of the gospel to come to Jesus with every weight and every burden you have and lay it at his feet and cast that care upon him 
and trust that He is not going to turn you away. Another, uh, my brother-in-law was talking to me one day, and he and he talked about where in where Jesus said, "Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light." When you, uh, he said, whenever you yoke up uh, oxen, they all they have it set to where because usually two two oxes are not going to be the exact same strength, so they adjust it so that the stronger one. The, the, the one that's not as strong doesn't have to pull the same weight as the, the one that's, that's the strongest. It equals out to where whatever weight, whatever you can carry, that's enough. Whatever you can do, it's enough. Why? Because the other one is going to do the heavy lifting. The other one is going to pull to make up the difference. So if you're not able to pull the whole weight, hey, he's got it. You're not able to, to, to carry this. Hey, he's got it. You're not able to, <laughs> to get through this without help. He's got it because why? You're yoked up with him. You're connected with him. And so when you can't, when you've pulled everything you can do, you've worked hard, you've tried, you've, you've tried to change, you've tried to do all this stuff. Stop trying to do it by yourself. Realize that you're hooked up with Christ. And so where you, where your uh, strength fails, that's where his strength kicks in. When you've done all you can do, that's when his strength takes over and he's able to pull you through because it's on him. It's his ability on the inside of us. It's not us trying to do this without him. He says, come unto me and I will give rest for your souls. If you're tormented or you're struggling on the inside because you're feeling like, you know what? I know that I need to do better. I should do better. I'm, I've got so many things that are going on and I I look at myself. Stop looking at yourself. Start looking at the one who made the way for you. The Bible declares that we are righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I don't have to be perfect. I just have to keep looking to him. I just don't walk away from him. I keep looking to my Savior. I keep looking to the one who gave me life, to the one who paid the price for my salvation, to the one who made a way where there was no way, to the one who gave his life so that he could save mine. Because there's no way that I could live a perfect life to be holy enough to earn salvation on my own, but I don't have to because Jesus took care of that for me. And all, I, all I'm doing is having a relationship with Him and trusting in Him, staying connected with Him, staying connected to the Savior. And I, if, as long as I don't turn away from Him, then I'm, I have nothing to be concerned about. As long as I don't reject my salvation, I am good. It's like being on, a, it's like be, being on a, 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 an escalator that's taking you to heaven. I don't have to do it. I get on the escalator. I just got to get on, okay? I'm on the escalator, and as long as I stay on that escalator, I am going to the destination. As long as I stay on there and don't jump off or try to, try to, you know, oh, well, I need to go back and get something. I need to, no, I'm staying on the escalator. Now, are you saying that you, no matter what you do, listen, If you're sinning and you're doing it and you could care less about God, you're not on the escalator. You've already gotten off. If you don't care about what God thinks, if you want to live your life and do your own thing and, and, and live uh, as sinful or, or as fleshy or uh, as selfish as you want to live, you're not on the escalator. You're not concerned about God because if you have a relationship with Him, then you're thinking about what He thinks about. You're concerned about what He thinks about. So don't, you know, when people say that it, 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 you're making it too easy, you're making it too simple, you're making it easy for people to live their life and, and never do, uh, never be righteous or never be holy or never be, uh, never, uh, work to not sin. Listen, if you're living that kind of life, you're not concerned about Christ or you're not concerned about God at all. You're just out for your own self. You're being selfish. So if that's the way you're living, then you need, you need to repent because if in the first place, you don't have a true relationship with the Lord Jesus. If you have a true relationship with the Lord Jesus, when you do mess up, when you do fail, you're going to say, you know what? I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that part of me. Or I don't like that. I don't like the way that makes me feel. I don't like that kind of life. I don't like doing that. And you know what? I know it's not pleasing to God. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep praying and asking him to help me to give me strength so that I can overcome this and I don't have to live that way. But I'm going to keep looking to God. I'm going to keep uh, striving to be 
like him and look to him and I'm never going to turn away from him, then that is a relationship with the Lord God that you're saying, Lord, when I mess up, when I fail, I simply apologize. I repent to you. I say, God, you know, that was wrong. I, I recognize that that is not the way that's not pleasing to you. And that's not the way you want me to live. And Lord, I thank you that you've already forgiven me. So I'm not going to uh, stop talking to you because I'm looking at how how goofy, goofy or messed up I've been or what I've done. But I'm just going to simply apologize, just like to your husband or wife. Your husband or wife, when you mess up, what do you do? You don't just go and pack up your bag and take off and go move out of the house because you you know, you got mad and blew it, you, or you did something wrong, or you, you, you know, you offended them or whatever. No, you simply say, you know what? I apologize because we're together. And you know what? I wasn't right in that area and I simply apologize and I want to ask you to forgive me. And then you just c come back together and have a sweet relationship. But you don't just pack your bags and take off because you messed up and, oh, I've blown it now. I guess I'm going to have to go find another mate, find another husband or wife. No, you are in covenant relationship. And that is the way it is with your heavenly father. So Jesus made it so simple. Come to him, all you who are weary, heavy laden and are burdened, and I will give you rest. I will give you the rest that you need. So keep looking to the Lord. Don't turn away from him. Don't run away. Don't run to something else. Don't try to, to find a new religion or a new. There's only one way to get to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. That is what, that is what God did for mankind. So don't try to run to something else or try to figure you're going to do it another way. Do it the way that God said. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And anyone, anyone who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So if you're struggling with your salvation, if you're struggling with wondering is how God feels about you, is it, you know, uh, all of these things, just keep looking to God. Keep looking to Him, and God will work out whatever is going on. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for people today for looking to you, realizing the God that you made the gospel simple. You made it simple and easy to just come to you with who we, who we are, the way we are, and God, you will take care of the rest, simply having a relationship with you. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord God, for touching people's lives wherever they are, whatever, whatever difficulty they're going through, however hard it is. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for changing their situation, changing the outcome. Lord, it looks like there's no way or it's hopeless. There's no, there's no way their rent's going to get paid. There's no way they're going to be able to keep their house. There's no way they're going to find another job like the one that they had. All of these things try to roll around in their mind, Lord, and, and say, you know, you know what? It's over. You've blown it or, or, or life is just too hard. You might as well take your own life. That is a lie from the devil. Father, I thank you in Jesus name for, for touching people's hearts, touching their lives today. Lord God, for encouraging them, stirring them up to look to you and to know that you have got their situation. And if they keep trusting in you, Lord God, you are going to make a way and everything is going to be all right in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great day.